Hello, Patrick. My name is Mike Davis. I'm a teaching pro in Southern California at a club called Shady Canyon. Thanks a lot for sending your golf swing in to the Golf Digest Challenge. Uh, this is a lot of fun, so hopefully this will help you a little bit. First of all, um, pretty good golf motion here. I know you said you didn't hit this one. Fantastic. But uh, what we'll do is we'll try to uh, isolate a couple positions here. And what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to break this into an eight frame sequence here, Patrick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to also include your buddy's um, analysis during this because I don't have a contact uh, info for him. I'm going to include both of them in one session here. So um, first of all, the camera angle is a little skewed. It's, it's a little difficult to see the path of the club and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is just kind of define some good points that I think are, are, are going on with your swing. Um, so as far as this eight frame sequence goes, I'm not seeing a whole lot. I'll t I'm just going to give you praise instead of criticism because I think you, you got a lot of good things going on. And I'm going to tell you what I think based on the camera angles. Number one, I think I think you got a good posture. You look like you're you're fairly tall through the legs, not sitting too much. I really think that is a great great starting point. Your arms look like they're hanging neutrally underneath you, and you have a good angle between your arms and the shaft. So that's a great starting position. So as far as the posture goes, I, I'm 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 pretty good with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line that uh, represents your spine angle, and one that represents the shaft angle. Another good spot here is if they're close to 90 degrees to each other, that's a really good leverage point. Um, in centrifugal force, you get 90 degrees to your suspension point, you can create maximum speed. So I think that's a great spot to be. Um, as the club comes back, we see here if I draw a line um, through your forearm. It's fairly parallel to the shaft angle at address. That's a nice, nice arm position at the top of your swing. Good, good angles there. You can see, or I can see, uh, if I zoom in on the club face, the club face looks like it's in line, um, straight line with the, with the back, your wrist, your arm, the shaft angle, and the uh, arm plane angle. Very, very good. So we'll advance this a little further. Drop it down inside a tiny bit. Now, one thing here, Patrick, this angle has gotten a little steeper now. I'm going to draw it in a different color, but now the shaft angle is steepening. So if we were to, you know, expand those lines, you can see that it's getting a little steeper. You know, parallel would be something like that. So maybe a tiny bit of an over-the-top move. Once again, it's a little difficult to see with this camera angle, but pretty good uh, release through the ball. The only thing that I really see, Patrick, is you got a very late release. And what I mean by that is you're, if I draw a circle around your hands and your arms, you still haven't um, uncocked the club yet. And the reason I can tell that that's true is I can look at the shadow down here on the ground, and I can see that everything is still in straight line with your right arm and the shaft. I think it would be best if you would let go of the club, release it. And um, I don't know if you're trying to steer it or if you grip it tight, but... That might be a little tidbit that might help you a little bit. Now, before I get to your friend's swing, one other thing for future reference, I think it'll help you quite a bit. Um, camera angles, if you're going to submit your swings in the future, um, here's a good little piece of information. Um, hang on one second here. There's some camera angles that I have uh, here. And this would really be helpful when you're uh, setting up your camera. So pretty simple stuff. When you're looking down the face on view, which is the image on the left, that's me um, at Shady Canyon. If I draw a line, there's a string on the ground. I always space out my camera the same exact distances to so get good um, similar angles, similar distances. Um, it's directly in the center. So you want to get the center, you get the you know the camera right in line with the hands, right through the spine. Um, on the down the line view, I'm going to draw a white line down from my furthest knuckle forward, and that's the hand line, and the camera is straight back from there. So the red line would be where the camera would be positioned. So it's not actually on the foot line, it's not actually on the ball line, it's it's almost halfway in between. It's right on the hands. I think that's the best camera angle you can get for shooting video okay so now let's get to your buddy swing 
Um, let's see, it's this one here. Okay, now, as far as his swing goes, once again, this camera is a bit close and a little bit too far down the, down the ball line, but that's okay. So what we do is I'll do the same thing. I'll put his into an eight-frame sequence, and I think there's a couple things that he can work on. Number one, I think he might have a little bit too low of a hand position. What I mean by that is this shaft angle is a bit, is kind of down by his knees. So if he were to have a little less knee bend here, be a little taller in his knees, his spine angle would probably come up here like this, and the shaft angle would probably be a little more like that. The reason I say that is I'm going to put him in his impact position. You see how much his hands rise up through the swing. That's an enormous amount. And the other thing is, um, not sure what his name is, but you can obviously uh, correlate that to him and share this with him. But he needs to try to get off that right side. He should be starting to get some weight transfer to the left side through impact for sure. So let me put a uh, tour player next door to him so you can see that more effectively. Um, here's Aaron Baddeley hitting a driver. Here's his address. I'm going to draw a line. His address position. And then his impact position. Okay, and now you can also see right here, I'll highlight that same thing. He's absolutely getting through the ball and off his right side. Okay, so a couple things there for your B. So we'll go back to the original point here. Clear up these lines. Let this go in slow motion. Now it looked like he hit this ball to the right a bit. So as he rises up, he's essentially getting further from the ball. As he rises up, he's pulling away from the ball, if that makes sense. So if his spine angle was here, excuse me, if his spine angle was something like this, and it goes up to something like this, he's effectively moved away from from the ball this way through impact which is pulling the club away from the ball this way and ultimately um, he's hitting the ball on the toe so I'm gonna draw a black line where the T is underneath the ball and you can see right where the club came through right to the inside hit it right on the toe and due to that we've got the golf ball making the club face spin open and the ball is going on a track something like this I'm just dotting the ball as it goes high and to the right is what it looks like I don't know what's over there to the right but it can't be good okay so a couple things I think your friend should try to stand up taller and try to get a more high hand position so He's obviously rising up through impact, so if we could get him somewhere maybe between there, maybe if the yellow line is where he is now, and this is where he is through impact. Let's draw another set of lines here. Maybe somewhere in between there. Everybody rises up because we extend that wrist angle. As the left wrist angle extends, the club gets longer, and uh, we need to make room. Maybe this red line would be a good in-between point to start. Whoops. Excuse me. Maybe if we had a line here, maybe if he could get, get his hands up in there somewhere. So stand up a little taller in the knees. Take advantage of your height. Better weight transfer. I think this guy's going to start to hit it straighter and maybe even turn that push into a slice. Okay, guys, thanks so much for your interest and in sending in the video to the Golf Digest Challenge. Good luck to both of you. Um, here's some contact information for me. If you have any desire to contact me, feel free. Good luck. Have a great summer and um, enjoy the game. Bye-bye.